Welcome to Deep Tech Review. Welcome to this fascinating area of knowledge. SpaceX Flight Number 4 achieves first landing of Starship Super Heavy. For the fourth time in just over a year, SpaceX has conducted a test mission of its massive Starship rocket from its Starbase Development Facility in Southern Texas. Named Flight 4, this mission aims to progress the rocket's goal of becoming predominantly reusable. Similar to the previous three missions, Flight 4 did not carry a payload and followed a suborbital trajectory. However, unlike the earlier flights, Flight 4 achieved soft splashdowns for both the Super Heavy Booster, Booster 11, and the Starship Upper Stage, Ship 29. The launch occurred at 7.50 a.m. CDT, 8.50 a.m. EDT, 12.50 UTC, near the start of a 120-minute window. On Wednesday, SpaceX assembled Ship 29 atop Booster 11, forming the 121-meter, 397-foot Starship rocket. On June 1st, SpaceX founder Elon Musk tweeted that the primary objective of this mission was to delve deeper into the atmosphere during re-entry, ideally reaching maximum heating. Following the mission, Musk praised the re-entry of the Starship despite losing many tiles and suffering a damaged flap. During Flight 3, the upper stage rolled uncontrollably, preventing a relight of one of its six Raptor engines. Despite this, the rocket's connection to the Starlink satellite internet network allowed it to stream high-definition views of its re-entry through a plasma blanket. SpaceX explained that the uncontrolled roll likely resulted from clogged valves responsible for roll control. To address this, future Starships will feature additional roll control thrusters and upgraded hardware for improved blockage resilience. In the last flight, the Super Heavy booster also prematurely shut down six of its 13 Raptor engines during the boost back burn, which remained offline during the attempted landing burn. SpaceX identified filter blockage in the liquid oxygen supply to the engines as the likely cause, leading to a loss of inlet pressure in the oxygen turbo pumps. Future Super Heavy boosters will include enhanced propellant filtration hardware inside the oxygen tanks. With the success of Flight 4, Musk hinted at an ambitious goal for Flight 5, catching the Super Heavy booster using the launch tower's chopsticks. Eyes on the moon. Flight 4 was significant for both SpaceX and NASA, as the rocket will play a crucial role in the Artemis 3 mission, targeting September 2026. Lisa Watson Morgan, manager of the Human Landing System program, and her team are collaborating with SpaceX to understand the rocket's development for the Artemis missions. She noted the progress made from previous flights and emphasized the importance of engine performance and consistency. Despite the unsuccessful Raptor relight on the upper stage during Flight 3, there is still ample time to achieve this milestone, aiming for late 2024 or early 2025. SpaceX is continuously improving the Raptor engines, incorporating updates into the build sequence. One key success noted by NASA was the propellant transfer, which moved liquid oxygen from the ship's header tank to the main upper stage LOX tank. This fulfilled a $53.2 million tipping point contract with NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate, demonstrating the transfer of 10 metric tons of propellant. This step is crucial for SpaceX's concept of ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer for future Artemis missions. SpaceX plans to launch a tanker version of the ship upper stage into low Earth orbit, followed by a series of ships to transfer propellant, supporting the HLS version of Starship for moon missions. Starship expansion. The timing for propellant transfer will depend on launching multiple Starship missions from more than one launch tower. SpaceX is building a second tower at Starbase, with segments and components shipped from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This expansion aims to support a monthly launch cadence at Starbase, although the learning from each flight may take more time. The FAA's approval of the launch license modification for Flight 4 includes scenarios for Starship entry that do not require an investigation if the vehicle is lost, potentially allowing for a quicker announcement of Flight 5. Human involvement. As SpaceX develops the human-rated version of Starship, Input from NASA's astronaut office at the Johnson Space Center is integral. Astronauts offer insights on the vehicle's interface, control system, and other functionalities. NASA astronaut Doug Wheelock and Axiom Space astronaut Peggy Whitson recently tested Axiom's pressurized spacesuits with Starship mock-ups, 
confirming sufficient space for planned activities. Shorter turnaround times between launches are a goal, with each flight reducing risks and providing deeper insights into engine performance. The increasing efficiency is partly due to the FAA's support and SpaceX's iterative improvements.